Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have four great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Boss Breaking State Laws for CPS Youth and Enticing Workplace Hostility, Reporting to the Department of Labor. The second story, a mother sabotages her daughter's chance at a career by demanding a higher salary for her entry-level job. The third story, the manager lost seven employees in an instant. The fourth story, I quit my job because my boss is a jerk. The first story is, my boss threatened to fire me unless I put in a two weeks notice. So yeah, I work in a nonprofit as a case manager for CPS Kids. Me and two old ladies do everything and if any one of us left the place would shut down. I put in my resignation because they were not paying me minimum wage for salary earners, who were exempt from overtime, $684 a week, saying we don't have to follow that. Really? Y'all don't have to follow a law set in place by the Department of Labor? Okay. So I told them, pay me and I'll train my replacement, because for personal reasons I gotta go. Really my boss is re-traumatizing the children and breaking state laws and I'm about to shut the place down. And I put the date down of when I'd leave, August 26. And I know I went too easy, but I love those kids and wanted to give them a chance to make it right. So she ignored my resignation for two days, and I sent it three times waiting for a response. She then waits a week then starts retaliating. She limits my work hours stating I'd need approval anytime I needed to work after 5pm. She would literally call me in to talk about stupid SH after 5pm for like an hour or two, and I've been there for two years and never done this. Then tells me I have to write a new resignation stating I would leave in two weeks. Not the four months I gave them because it takes that long to train a new case manager. And I said no, I'm at will, and gave the resignation because people would just leave without telling us. Then she says well it's at will and I can fire you and I don't want to lead to that. And I said okay but I'm not. And she says so I'm going to tell the board of trustees in our licensing that your last day is two weeks from now. And I'm like no it's not. I was meeting with the board next week to discuss the pay raise and the money owed from overtime, which they granted stating, we read it wrong, sorry. So I meet with them today and they apologize, but at the end stated, your behavior today has tainted our opinion of you and is not repairable. I left for an hour to cool down and report them to the Department of Labor and tried explaining to my boss who waved me off. So they said I abandoned my position and took it out on her. It happened an hour before our meeting and she was in the room and then said, yeah, I asked you questions and you ignored them. I was furious. I was shaking. So I told them no, that's not what happened, and that I didn't care if she wrote me up. Then they said, your last day is May 26th, since your resignation didn't have a specific day. It did. Then they called in our financial lady, whom they are also effing over, and told her she was being disrespectful too, and that she's being demoted to hourly pay, and has been salary for six years, because she's doing too many jobs. Our boss changed her description to fit HR, executive assistant and financial but agreed with them? We're being punished for being right? Like they don't realize they're going to have to shut down in two weeks when we leave. Oh, and then, then my boss has the audacity to be like, I need to hug you, and stood there with her arms out and wouldn't leave. So I let her hug me, then she says while crying, I didn't know they said they'd do that to you. You can stay until August if you want. Like, you didn't just throw me under the bus? Then went to the financial lady and said that I offered to hug her? Those are the lies. She lies about small things, big things, to the children saying she can charge them with felonies for pillow fights. Oh, and instead of overtime, they were doing flex time. So really I could leave and come as I pleased, as long as I had the flex time for it. I had 180.75 hours, and she'll leave early to get her son a new tux, when her assistant can't afford to fix her tooth, because they took away our benefits. And she brags about her vacations to Jamaica and new car and million dollar house, while some workers can't afford groceries because she pays them $10 an hour and works them up to 20 days straight. Oh, oh, and she almost caused the death of a worker telling them they couldn't go to the ER because they couldn't breathe and they had a lung transplant already and they needed to stay in the hospital for a week after because their oxygen levels were too low. They thought she would fire them. Then has the audacity to be offended when they quit? If she can't manipulate, then she'll guilt trip, then try intimidation to keep people. She's stupid though. She literally made up a word called hippocampus and tells visitors it regulates the kids' emotions. So she only manipulates less intelligent people. It's been hell. This hurts. I love those kids and have put my all into showing them they can have a better life. But she makes it unethical and unbearable to work there. And this is just 1% of it. There's more. I just needed to vent. I'm reporting everything. I hate her and her son who has six complaints about her. 
Edit. My apologies. Understand what a hippocampus is. I didn't misspell an accident that was purposeful, because honestly I can't remember the word she uses, and I always automatically correct it in my head. She will tell literal donors this word while on tours, and then add in some make-believe signs. She told a kid once his psychotropics only started going into his bloodstream when he was asleep. Since I know hippocampus, I didn't know what word she used. Update. Just following up. I got my unemployment fortunately because she sent the Department of Labor my emailed resignation, except she removed the part where I state when I would leave, which is obviously what she sent the board who also said I didn't put a date for leaving. The lady on my case said that they have to prove why they fired me, since she wasn't being forthcoming with all information. She didn't even edit the email appropriately, just erased like the first couple of sentences, and the lady on my case was like, yeah, the sentence doesn't even make sense. Reported her to CPS hotline. My other co-workers reported her and the board for various reasons. Somehow she's still open and runs all shifts because her car is always there and everyone has quit. She got two kids removed from the shelter because she told them not to tell their CPS workers what was going on. Don't know if they pay anyone enough to actually do something. Fortunately, the kids I last took care of left a little after I quit. The two she got removed from her care came after me. Oh yeah, old workers who stayed after I left are updating me. So yeah, wish it was like the FBI busted in and arrested her for her craziness, but it's slowly happening and fortunately her son is with his father right now in Florida and hasn't been to the ER once for his lungs, surprisingly enough. Hurts. Really thought I found my calling. Now I'm working on doing something IT related because I've always found it to just be a cool field. This class war is too heavy for me to do any more social work. I'm tired of caring so much. The second story is, EM ruins her daughter's chance at a career. Context, I work in a small sized company. With the amount of clients increasing, we decided to hire an additional team member at an entry level position to help us. The mandatory requirement for it is fluency in a specific foreign language. There was this candidate, we'll call her Abby. She graduated from university for a year already, but has no work experience, no internships, and no extracurriculum activities during university. She was, however, quite good academically. During the interview, it's pretty obvious she's a bit sheltered, but out of all the other candidates, she's the most suitable one for our team's current needs. We were worried about her ability to coordinate and communicate within the team, and some other social skills, but we figured we'd give her a chance and see because her language ability is what we're after anyway. Here's where the EM comes in. We called Abby in for a second interview, and my supervisor asked our HR to offer her the job. On the phone when HR mentioned her salary, Abby paused for a moment. Then suddenly the EM took over the phone and asked to speak instead. The EM was complaining why our company's salary offer was less than other companies. She complained that her daughter deserves more, that others would give more for her language ability. Do you know what's the standard salary for someone like her? No firms would offer her this rate. It should be this and that. Disclaimer, we're not firms. We are redacted for privacy. Our H told us that the EM sounds like a fake posh. Like those entitled mothers who tries hard to brag to other people how rich and successful they are. At the end of the conversation, the EM just said, let us think about it. We'll call back next week. My daughter has other places to consider. Or something along this line. My supervisor decided to cancel the offer. Honestly, if we actually hire Abby, there could be more problem with her mother in the future. We were all pretty dumbfounded by this interaction, and particularly this EM. I was a bit bummed out because we were actually quite excited to have Abby in our team. Now, I did not know exactly how much was offered by my supervisor, but my company offers a pretty competitive salary for our location. Outside of the major city, with good benefits and a solid raise and bonus policy, I just don't know how much EM was expecting. Sentence deleted for privacy. We were very lenient with her during the interview because she has absolutely no experiences and never even mentioned any transferable skills at all. Just one day after the phone conversation, the EM calls our HR back and guess what the EM said? Well, you know, your company's offer seems reasonable. We'll accept it. It's not even the daughter that calls back. Me and my colleague is just laughing at this point. Well, our HR said she'll check with my supervisor. My supervisor just said, yeah, no, I'm not having it. Just no. Talk about sabotaging your daughter's chances. I'm quite sympathetic towards Abby. The position would suit her interest on the academic side, and it's even a very good chance for her to learn and grow in joining the workforce in society. Unbelievably, EM has to interfere and ruin her chances. I doubt other companies or firms would accept Abby, at least not soon. Most employers in the field that EM seem to be looking for Abby are brutal during interviews, even for entry levels. I doubt EM cares though. They're well off looking at the university Abby goes to. The next story is why I quit my former job. Back in 2011, I had just finished my first year of university and felt that it simply wasn't for me. 
and thus I started looking for work. I had just gotten my first car and I was excited to get some work experience. At this time I was 19 years old, kinda small at only 164 centimeters, 5 foot 4, and I've been growing up with binders syndrome, a syndrome that means that I had underdeveloped nose and jaw structures, and even though I had surgeries for both when I was 18, my nose spine is still kinda flat. I'm also very timid and don't like confrontations. This comes into play later. I came into contact with a work that was similar to those door knacking jobs, although this was more than you had already decided a time to do a demonstration of the machine that we were selling. We were selling some sort of cleaning machine with a base cost of 3,700 euros, with extra additions adding up to 4,200 euros. You did get paid for every demonstration you went to, and I got a bonus for every machine that you sold. In hindsight, I'm glad that I left them fairly early, considering some dirty tricks they were doing, like letting the customers test the machine right after it being sold so that a refund couldn't be cashed in. During the two months I was hired, I only sold two machines, one to my parents and one to my aunt. Considering the fact that I'm from a very small village of 400 and the next town only have a couple thousand living there, it's no wonder that the machine didn't really get sold because in the end, who would spend 400 euros on what is essentially just a vacuum cleaner and window cleaner? The machine was also a big pain to clean, considering that it didn't use vacuum bags, but was water-based. It needed cleaning after every usage of it. My desire to quit the job after I had been doing another demo of the machine for some friends of my father. I didn't get it sold here either so my boss were calling me up and started questioning me why I didn't get any machines sold. Out of nowhere, he then said, maybe it's because of your disease? Excuse me, what? Just because my nose is looking weird, it does not qualify as a disease. I was, however, too timid to question against his words. I went home that night crying, and the next Monday I handed in my notice and quit my job. And the last story is, Everyone from my last job quit today and it's about time. When COVID hit, I was barista at a coffee shop. I was laid off and placed on unemployment for three months before returning part-time with the promise from my manager that I would return to full-time when the extended benefits ended. Not only was that promise not kept, but my manager cut my pay without informing me, had to find out when I saw my paycheck, cut my hours even more to the legal minimum, four hours a week and use that shift to have me train new hires who were paid less and given full time instead of me. Deliberately scheduled me in a way that I'd never work with my only friend there, which was the only time I'd get to see her because we were deep in quarantine. After extended benefits ended, UI didn't even cover my rent, so I returned to working in film production. I had taken a break from that work to focus on mental health care, but I kept my one day a week at the coffee shop so I still qualified for unemployment in case I needed it later. I was hoping to quit on my own terms when the time was right, but my manager fired me for an infraction, so tiny and insignificant it's not really worth explaining. What matters is that after I was gone, nobody in the shop was making more than $12 an hour. In LA, mind you. And with few customers physically coming to the store, tips were practically non-existent. I found out today that everybody else who stayed and got hired since then all quit on the same day. Seven employees gone in an instant. Nobody's left. Although I've moved on to far greener pastures, it's satisfying to hear that for the time being, these SH practices have consequences and that the people I worked with have agency in the matter. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.